Hello everyone, once again welcome back to my channel and today I am recording the audio book for class 12th unit 3rd electrochemistry. So, let's start. Chemical reactions can be used to produce electrical energy. Conversely, electrical energy can be used to carry out chemical reactions that do not proceed spontaneously. Electrochemistry is the study of production of electricity from energy released during spontaneous chemical reactions and the use of electrical energy to bring about non-spontaneous chemical transformations. The subject is of importance both for theoretical and practical considerations. A large number of metals, sodium hydroxide, chlorine, fluorine and many other chemicals are produced by electrochemical methods. Batteries and fuel cells convert chemical energy into electrical energy and are used on large scale in various instruments and devices. The reactions carried out electrochemically can be energy efficient and less polluting. Therefore, the study of electrochemistry is important for creating new technologies that are eco-friendly. The transmission of sensory signals through cells to brain and vice versa and communication between the cells are known to have electrochemical origin. Electrochemistry is therefore a very vast and interdisciplinary subject. In this unit, we will cover only some of its important elementary aspects. 3.1 Electrochemical Cells In class 11th, Unit 8, we had studied the construction and functioning of Daniel cells. Figure 3.1 This cell converts the chemical energy liberated during the redox reaction to electrical energy and has an electrical potential equal to 1.1 volt when concentration of Zn2 positive and Cu2 positive ions is unity. Such a device is called a galvanic or a voltaic cell. The reaction is Zn plus Cu2 positive gives out Zn2 positive plus Cu. If an external opposite potential is applied in the galvanic cell and increased slowly, we find that the reaction continues to take place till the opposing voltage reaches the value 1.1 volt. When the reaction stops altogether and no current flows through the cell. Any further increase in the external potential again starts the reaction but in the opposite direction. It now functions as an electrolytic cell. A device for using electrical energy to carry non-spontaneous chemical reactions. Both types of cells are quite important and we shall study some of their salient features in the following pages. 3.2 Galvanic Cells As mentioned earlier, class 11th unit 8, a galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell that converts the chemical energy of a spontaneous redox reaction into electrical energy. In this device, the Gibbs energy of the spontaneous redox reaction is converted into electrical work which may be used for running a motor or electrical gadgets like heater, fan, geyser, etc. Daniel cell discussed earlier is one such cell in which the following redox reaction occurs. Zn plus U2 positive gives out Zn2 positive plus C. This reaction is a combination of two half reactions whose addition gives the overall cell reaction. The two reactions are Cu2 positive plus 2 electron gives out Cu and Zn gives out Zn2 positive plus 2 electron in which the copper reaction is the reduction half reaction and the Zn is giving the 2 electron so it is a oxidation half reaction. These reactions occur in two different portions of the Daniel cells. The reduction half reaction occurs on the copper electrode while the oxidation half reaction occurs on the zinc electrode. These two portions of the cells are called half cells or redox couples. The copper electrode may be called the reduction half cell and zinc electrode the oxidation half cell. We can construct innumerable number of galvanic cells on the pattern of Daniel cell by taking combination of different half cells. Each half cell consists of a metallic electrode dipped into an electrolyte. The two half cells are connected by a metallic wire through a voltmeter and a switch externally. The electrolytes of the two half cells are connected internally through a salt bridges as shown in figure 3.1. Sometimes both the electrodes 
dip in the same electrolyte solution and in such cases we do not require a salt bridge. At each electrode electrolyte interface there is a tendency of metal ions from the solution to deposit on the metal electrode trying to make it positively charged. At the same time metal atoms of the electrode have a tendency to go into the solution as ions and leave behind the electrons at the electrode trying to make it negatively charged. At equilibrium there is a separation of charges and depending on the tendencies of the two opposing reactions the electrode may be positively or negatively charged with respect to the solution. A potential difference develop between the electrode and the electrolyte which is called electrode potential. When the concentrations of the all these species is involved in a half cell is unity then the electrode potential is known as a standard electrode potential. According to IUPAC convention standard reduction potentials are now called standard electrode potentials. In a galvanic cell the half cell in which oxidation takes place is called anode and it has a negative potential with respect to the solution. The other half cell in which reduction takes place is called cathode and it has a positive potential with respect to the solution. Thus there exists a potential difference between two electrodes and as soon as the switch is in the on position the electrons flow from negative electrode to positive electrode. The direction of current flow is opposite to that of electron flow. The potential difference between the two electrodes of a galvanic cell is called the cell potential and is measured in volts. The cell potential is the difference between the electrode potential that is reduction potential of the cathode and anode. It is called the cell electromotive force EMF of the cell when no current is drawn through the cell. It is now an accepted convention that we keep the anode on the left and the cathode on the right while representing the galvanic cell. A galvanic cell is generally represented by putting a vertical line between metal and electrolyte solution and putting a double vertical line between the two electrolytes connected by a salt bridge. Under this convention the EMF of the cell is positive and is given by the potential of the half cell on the right hand side minus the potential of the half cell on the left hand side that is E cell is equals to E right minus E left. This is illustrated by the following example. See the reactions here. The cell reaction is copper plus 2 Ag positive that is in aqueous form gives out CO2 positive aqueous plus 2 Ag that is solid and half cell reactions are on cathode the reduction is happening so it is 2 Ag positive plus 2 electron gives out 2 Ag and anode oxidation is happening here so it is Cu gives out Cu2 positive plus 2 electron. It can be seen that the sum of two, these two reaction leads to overall reaction in the cell and that silver electrode act as a cathode and copper electrode act as an anode. The cell can be represented as E cell is equals to E right minus E left is equals to E Ag positive and Ag minus E Cu2 positive and Cu. Now 3.2.1 measurement of electrode potential. The potential of individual half cell cannot be measured. We can measure only the difference between the two half cell potential that gives the EMF of the cell. If we arbitrarily choose the potential of one electrode that is half cell then that of the other can be determined with respect to this. According to convention a half cell called a standard hydrogen electrode represented by Pt bar H2 bar H ion is assigned a zero potential at all temperatures corresponding to the reaction. H ion plus electron gives out half H2 that is gaseous form. The standard hydrogen electrode consists of a platinum electrode coated with platinum black. The electrode is dipped in an acidic solution and pure hydrogen gas is bubbled through it. The concentration of both the reduced and oxidized form of hydrogen is maintained at unity. This implies that the pressure of hydrogen gas is 1 bar and the concentration of hydrogen ion in the solution is 1 molar. At 298K, the EMF of the cell, standard hydrogen electrode, second half constructed by taking standard hydrogen electrode as anode, that is reference half cell 
and the other half cell as cathode gives the reduction potential of the other half cell. If the concentration of the oxidized and the redu reduced form of the species is in the right hand half cell are unity, then the cell potential is equal to standard electrode potential that is Er of the given half cell which is E is equals to Er minus El that is right and left. As El for standard hydrogen electrode is 0, so E is equals to Er minus 0 is equals to Er. The measured EMF of the cell is Pt bar H2 bar H ion double bar Cu2 positive bar Cu is 0.34 volt and it is also the value for the standard electrode potential of the half cell corresponding to the reactions that is Cu2 positive plus 2 electron gives out Cu. Similarly, the measured EMF of the cell Pt bar H2 bar H ion double bar Zn2 positive bar Zn is 0.76 volt corresponding to the standard electrode potential of the half cell reaction. Zn2 positive plus 2 electron gives out Zn. The positive value of the standard electrode potential in the first case indicates that Cu2 positive ions get reduced more easily than the H ions. The reverse process cannot occur. That is hydrogen ions cannot oxidize copper or alternatively we can say that hydrogen gas can reduce copper ion under the standard conditions described above. Thus, Cu does not dissolve in HCl. In nitric acid, it is oxidized by nitrite ion and not by hydrogen ion. The negative value of the standard electrode potential in the second case indicates that hydrogen ions can oxidize zinc or zinc can reduce hydrogen ions. In view of this convention, the half reaction for the Daniel cell in figure 3.1 can be written as left electrode Zn gives out Zn2 positive plus 2 electron and right electrode copper 2 positive gives out plus 2 electron gives out copper. The overall reaction of the cell is the sum of above two reactions and we obtain the equation. Zn plus U2 positive gives out Zn2 positive plus copper. EMF of the cell is equal to E is equals to Er minus E left that is 0.34 volt minus minus 0.76 volt that is the complete value is 1.10 volt. Sometimes metal like platinum or gold are used as inert electrodes. They do not participate in the reaction but provide their surface for oxidation and reduction reactions and for the conduction of electrons. For example, platinum is used in the following half cells, hydrogen electrode that is platinum H2 bar H ion and with half reaction that is H ion plus electron gives out half H2 and bromine electrode that is platinum bar Br2 bar Br negative that is aqueous form. With half cell reactions, half Br2 plus electron gives out Br negative that is an aqueous form. The standard electrode potentials are very important and we can extract a lot of useful information from them. The values of a standard electrode potentials for same selected half cell reduction reactions are given in table 3.1. If the standard electrode potential of an electrode is greater than 0, then its reduced form is more stable compared to hydrogen gas. Similarly, if the standard electrode potential is negative, then hydrogen gas is more stable than the reduced form of the species is. It can be seen that the standard electrode potential for fluorine is the highest in table indicating that fluorine gas has the maximum tendency to get reduced to fluoride ions and therefore fluorine gas is the strongest oxidizing agent and fluoride ion is the weakest reducing agent. Lithium has the lowest electrode potential indicating that lithium ion is the weakest oxidizing agent while lithium metal is the most powerful reducing agent in an aqueous solution. It may be seen that as we go from top to bottom in table 3.1, the standard electrode potential decreases and with this decreases the oxidizing power of the species is on the left and increases the reducing power of the species is on the right hand side of the reaction. Electrochemical cells are extensively used for determining the pH of solutions, solubility product, equilibrium constant and other thermodynamic properties and for potentiometric titrations. 3.3 Nurse Equations We have assumed in the previous section that the concentration of all the species is involved in the electrode reaction is unity. This need to be always true. Nurse showed that for the electrode reaction M N positive plus N E gives out M. The electrode potential at any concentration 
measured with respect to standard hydrogen electrode can be represented by the reaction you can see here. But concentration of solid M is taken as unity and we have again the reaction you can see here. E Mn plus slash M has already been defined. R is a gas constant. Its value everybody knows 8.314 and F is a Faraday constant and its value is 96487 coulomb per mole. And T is temperature in Kelvin and uh, Mn N positive is the concentration of the species. Is. Mn positive ions are present in aqueous species and H2O as liquid gases and solids are shown by gas and solids. Here you can see the complete table. It would be better but better if uh, you are seeing the NCRT when you are listening my audiobook. In Daniel cells, the electrode potential for any given concentration of CO2 positive and Zn2 positive, we write for cathode, the reaction you can see here, and for anode, the reaction is present. And the cell potential, that is the E cell, is equals to E CO2 positive slash CO minus E Zn2 positive slash Zn. The remaining reaction you can see here, and the final reaction is the E cell is equals to E negative cell minus RT upon 2F. It can be seen that E cell depends on the concentration of both CO2 positive and Zn2 positive ions. It increases with increase in the concentration of CO2 positive ions and decrease in the concentration of the Zn2 positive ion. By converting the natural logarithm in equation 3.11 to the base 10 and substituting the values of R, F and T is equals to 298 Kelvin, it reduces to E cell is equals to E cell minus 0 0.059 upon 2 log Zn2 positive upon Cu2 positive. We should use the same number of electrons for both the electrodes and thus for the following cell. Nickel bar, nickel 2 positive, double bar and Ag2 positive bar Ag. The cell reaction is nickel plus 2 Ag positive gives out nickel 2 positive plus 2 Ag. The next equation can be written as E cell, E cell negative minus RT upon 2F ln and I2 positive upon AG positive the whole square. And for a general electrochemical reaction of the type AA plus BB in presence of an electron and CC plus DD. Nernst equation can be written as E cell, E negative cell minus RT upon NF ln Q. And here you can put the values for that. Three point three point one equilibrium constant from Nernst equation. If the circuit in Daniel cell is closed, then we note that the reaction is Zn plus Cu two positive gives out Zn two positive plus Cu takes place, and as time passes, the concentration of 2 Zn2 positive keeps on increasing while the concentration of Cu2 positive keeps on decreasing. At the same time, voltage of the cell as read on voltmeter keeps on decreasing. After some time, we shall note that there is no change in the concentration of Cu2 positive and Zn2 positive ions. And at the same time, voltmeter gives zero reading. This indicates that equilibrium has been attained. In this situation, the Nernst equation may be written as E cell is equals to 0 is equals to E negative cell minus 2.303 RT upon 2F log Zn2 positive upon Cu2 positive or E negative cell is equals to 2.303 RT upon 2F log Zn2 positive upon Cu2 positive but at equilibrium Zn2 positive upon Cu2 positive is equals to Kc for the reaction 3.1 and at T is equals to 298K, the above equation can be written as E negative cell is equals to 0 0.059 volt upon 2 log Kc is equals to 1.1 volt. And here the value for the log Kc is equals to 37.288. Kc is equals to 2 into 10 to the power 37 at 298k. In general, E negative cell is equals to 2.303 RT upon NF log Kc. 
that is the reaction 3.14. Thus, equation 3.14 gives a relationship between equilibrium constant of the reaction and standard potential of the cell in which that reaction takes place. Thus, equilibrium constants of the reaction difficult to measure otherwise can be calculated from the corresponding negative value of the cell. 3.32 that is electrochemical cell and gives energy of the reaction. Electrical work done in one second is equal to electrical potential multiplied by total charge passed. If we want to obtain maximum work from a galvanic cell, then charge has to be passed reversibly. The reversible work done by a galvanic cell is equal to decrease in its Gibbs energy and therefore if the EMF of the cell is E and NF is the amount of the charge passed and delta RG is the Gibbs energy of the reaction then Gibbs energy is equals to minus NFE cell. It may be remembered that E cell is an extensive parameter but delta G is an extensive thermodynamic property and the value depends on N. Thus if we write the equation Zn plus Cu2 positive gives out Zn2 positive plus Cu where delta Rg is equals to minus 2 Fe cell. But when we write the reaction 2 Zn plus 2 Cu2 positive gives out 2 Zn2 positive plus 2 Cu. At that time, the value for the Gibbs energy is the minus 4 Fe. If the concentration of the all reacting species is, is unity, then E cell is equals to E negative cell and we have delta G is equals to minus Nf E negative cell. Thus, from the measurement of E negative cell, we can obtain an important thermodynamic quantity, delta G, standard Gibbs energy of the reaction. From the latter, we can calculate equilibrium constant by the equation delta G is equals to minus RT ln K. 3.4 Conductance of Electrolytic Solution It is necessary to define a few terms before we consider the subject of conductance of electricity through electrolytic solutions. The electrical resistance is represented by the symbol R and it is measured in ohm, which in terms of SI based unit is equal to kilogram meter square per S square A square. It can be measured with the help of a Wheatstone bridge with which you are familiar from your study of physics. The electrical resistance of any object is directly proportional to its length L and inversely proportional to its area of cross section A that is a, so that is R is proportional to L upon A or R is equals to rho L upon A. The constant of proportionality rho is called resistivity or specific resistance. It's SI unit or ohm meter and quite often its sub multiple ohm centimeter is also used. IUPAC recommends the use of term resistivity over specific resistance and hence in the rest of the book we shall use the term resistivity. Physically, the resistivity for a substance is its resistance when it is 1 meter long and its area of cross section is 1 meter square. It can be seen that 1 ohm meter is equals to 100 ohm centimeter or 1 ohm centimeter is equals to 0.01 ohm meter. The inverse of resistance R is called conductance. G and we have the relation G is equals to 1 upon R is equals to A upon rho L is equals to K A upon L. The SI unit of conductance is Siemens and represented by the symbol S and is equal to ohm or you can say per ohm also known as mu or here you can see the symbol. The inverse of resistivity called the conductivity, specific conductance is represented by the symbol K that is a Greek kappa and uh, here you can see the symbol for kappa and IUPAC has recommended the use term of conductivity over specific conductance and hence we shall use the term conductivity in the rest of the book. The SI units conductivity are S per meter but quite often kappa is expressed in S per centimeter. Conductivity of material in S per meter is its conductance and when it is 1 meter long, its area of cross section is 1 meter square. It may be noted that 1 S per centimeter is equals to 100 S per meter. 
Here you can see the table and the values of conductivities of some selected materials at 298.15 K. So here you can see this table. I am reading the conductors and uh, just reading their values about their conductivity, material and conductivity again. So here the sodium is having the 2.1 into 10 to the power 3. Copper is 5.9 into 10 to the power 3. Silver is 6.2 into 10 to the power 3. Gold is 4.5 into 10 to the power 3. Iron is 1 into 1, 10 to the power 3. And graphite is having the 1.2 and 10. 1.2 multiplied by 10. Then insulators, glass 1 into 10 to the power minus 16. Teflon 1 into 10 to the power minus 18. Now come to the aqueous solutions that is pure water it is having conductivity of 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 5 then 0.1 m HCl 0.1 molar HCl that is 3.91 0 0.01 molar KCl that is 0 0.14 0 0.01 molar NaCl that is 0 0.12 0 0.1 molar HAC that is the 0 0.047 and for the 0 0.01 molar HAC that is the 0.016. Now come to the semiconductors that is the CuO 1 into 10 to the power minus 7, silicon 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 and G that is the 2.0 it means 2. It can be seen from table 3.2 that the magnitude of the conductivity varies a great deal and depends on the nature of the material. It also depends on the temperature and pressure at which the measurements are made. Materials are classified into conductors, insulators and semiconductors depending on the magnitude of their conductivity. Metals and their alloys have very large conductivity and are known as conductors. Certain non-metals like carbon black, graphite and some organic polymers are also electronically conducting. Substances like glasses, ceramics, etc. having very low conductivity and are known as insulator. Substances like silicon, doped silicon and gallium arsenide having conductivity between conductors and insulators and that are called semiconductors and are important electronic material. Certain materials called superconductors by definition have zero resistivity for infinite or you can say infinite conductivity. Earlier only metals and their alloys at very low temperature at 0 to 15 Kelvin were known to behave as superconductors but nowadays a number of ceramic materials and mixed oxides are also known to show superconductivity at temperature as high as 150 K. Electrical conductance through metals is called the metallic or electronic conductance and is due to the movement of electrons. The electronic conductance depends on number one, the nature and the structure of the metal, number two, the number of valence electrons per atom, number third, temperature that it decreases with increase of temperature. Now here is some information about the electronically conducting polymers. In 1977, Mac Diarmid, Heger and Shirakawa discovered that acetylene gas can be polymerized to produce a polymer. Polyacetylene, when exposed to vapors of iodine, acquires metallic luster and conductivity. Since then, several organic conducting polymers have been made, such as polyaniline, polypyrrole, and polythiophene. These organic polymers, which have properties like metals, being composed wholly of elements like carbon, hydrogen, and occasionally nitrogen, oxygen, or sulfur, are much lighter than normal metals and can be used for making lightweight batteries. Besides, they have the mechanical properties of polymers such as flexibility so that one can make electronic devices such as transistors that can be bent like a sheet of plastic. For the discovery of conducting polymers, Mac Diarmid, Heger and Shirakawa were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the year 2000. That's a great thing. As the electrons enter at one end and go out through the other end, the composition of metallic conductor remains unchanged. The mechanism of conductance through semiconductor is more complex. We already know in class 11th unit 7 that 
even very pure water has a small amounts of hydrogen and hydroxyl ion which lend it very low conductivity that is 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 5. When electrolytes are dissolved in water, they furnish their own ions in the solution, hence its conductivity also increases. The conductance of electricity by ions present in the solution is called electrolytic or ionic conductance. The conductivity of electrolytic ion solutions depends on number 1. The nature of the electrolyte added. Number 2. Size of the ions produced and their solvation. Number 3. The nature of the solvent and its viscosity. Number 4. Concentration of the electrolyte. Number 5. Temperature. It increases with the increase of temperature. Passage of direct current through ionic solution over a prolonged period can lead to change in its composition due to electrochemical reactions. 